Oh god, they're spinning around. <laughs> you okay? I felt my hand get touched. You are. You are a funny one. We started up again the next morning after investigating the Sally House. We visited the Santa Fe Depot Museum to enrich ourselves even deeper into the history of Atchison, Kansas. Established in 1967, the first museum opened in 1968, and over time, they were able to collect many artifacts that were focused on the historical town. We spent more time visiting some of the architect of the town and managed to stop into a local place called Back Road Atlas where they focused on repurposed furniture and decor from the artists and the handmade community. Welcome to Back Road Atlas. This is, uh, we've been in this building for three years. We lease it from a, a gentleman in Kansas City. So we have been trying in the last year to purchase this building, so I've been doing a lot of history on it. Um, it was built by a gentleman named A.J. Harwai. He came to Atchison with $8 in his pocket, and by the time that he built this building on this property, he had owned three different uh, hardware stores in town and had grown into this. Purchased the building in a, uh, purchased the lot, purchased the whole block, it was called the Harway block, and they built it from the ground up and it was built as a hardware warehouse. So he actually had seven trucks, or he had 21 trucks that went out to seven states to sell hardware to the settlers as they were going and settling out towards California. So he was kind of a big traveling salesman. But when he built it, it was the most uh, updated building in Atchison. The building is incredible the way it's built. It is built with huge timbers that start, starts if you can even see the timbers here, that start small. It's a four-story building with a full basement underneath it. And when we were moving stuff around downstairs, we found windows that go into a building, or uh, a room that sits underneath the sidewalk on the outside of the building, which we cannot figure out what it's for. I'll actually take it down there and show it to you. Oh, really? Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, so we've been trying to figure out through through uh, historical records what that actual room was for. But um, we have come to find in this building that there are many spirits that have stayed from the industrial period when it was uh, a hardware warehouse through the changes um, from a factory to uh, they was, there was a plumbing hardware store here for a while too, but we seem to have spirits from a few, few different eras. Uh, Everett is one of the main spirits that's on this floor with us, and he comes and goes. He's kind of a jokester. <clears throat> he uh, plays little tricks on us, moves things around. He'll nudge you in the back. He'll kind of play with your hair a little bit. Uh, then I have two ladies. Um, one that was her office was in the ladies' restroom, so she hangs out in there. Uh, and then we've got another lady that just kind of roams around in a, uh, she's been seen in a long white Victorian dress. And those are the three that stay up on the first floor with us. And we like them, we're comfortable with them, everything's good with that. 
Uh, down in the basement a whole bunch more spirits that, that we just kind of leave down there. Um, the McIntyre Villa has been there for, I don't know when the year, I haven't, I haven't done much history on it, but we knew Goldie when she was there. We used to go to the schools around there, and we knew her from when she actually lived in the house, and she had all the cats. So oh, we really? kind of knew, yes, and her family then stayed in stayed in the house. Uh, I did a drawing one time of the house, so I had to take her a picture of the calendar and I, before I was done with it, and I met her, but she was there a long time. So it's just it's funny that 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 house has stayed in in kind of the same families and we can always track the history of it because it was kind of a family person that lived there. So it's it's just Stephanie will tell you all about it. Stephanie knows more about that house because she is in love with it. So she will give you all the history of it and she will you'll you'll just be thrilled with her. She loves the house and has a true love for it. So she's restored it and painted it the way it should be has gotten um, furniture and accessories that actually fit the time period of the house. Have so you, it's just amazing. Have you heard of anything yeah. happening? Like oh, you can hear noises. You can get pictures and mirrors. Um, you can sit in one room and hear a door slam in another, and you, and you know how many physically people are in the house. You can hear footsteps upstairs. Um, you know, I mean, if you have any kind of ghost mover at all, it, it'll go off crazy for you. But... Now in the basement, oh weird. <laughs> weird down there. Yeah, weird. You get a little weird feeling down there, but uh, everything else, you know, is good. I can wash my Let me take my key up. These are our these are our ghost orbs. These are all taken by people that that we know, where we get the best orbs. Oh, that's really good. Cool. Do you know this is the first time I noticed this and we've been in here how long? Yeah. We're gonna take a look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Beam Look at the caps, the little caps on them. They just pop those and they go from big to small all the way up to the fourth floor. They are incredible. Oh. Um, this is the original sprinkler system that they had in here. This is Mr. Harwai and this is the original layout of the building and I've got the original post postcard so we can see that this was a solid sidewalk. This is just a drawing but in the postcard it's still a solid sidewalk. These doors seal off. There's two of them, one on this end, one on the other. Seal this room off. So this is actually under the sidewalk, under out the in the street. Yes. Wow. Okay. Come on in here. This is what I can't figure out what this room is for. Is it's got windows that face into the building, and the two big sealed doors. And this is the original um, sprinkler system. We added the lights just because we had we had spirits, or we just walking around, hanging out, know, sat down, told the stories. But um, about two years ago, they were fixing the sidewalk and redid the sidewalks upstairs. And I kept saying, "There is a room under there." Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they came through. <laughs> they came through the room, so we had it fixed and put it back. Oh, out. right up there. Yes, I they came get through. That they had to fix that. That's, that's what we fixed. They had to fix that right there so it sealed back in. But yeah. between the headers across the top, I mean, this was built into the original building when they put it in. And this was an empty block, so they actually physically built this room for a reason. And we just don't know what it is. Did they have to store something they needed, a material that needed to be colder than the other ones? Or sealed I'm off? Sure. I think it was uh, any type of uh, like boot digging or anything right now, possibly. Well, why would you have windows? Oh, would you want cool. people to look at it? And then we thought Underground yeah. Railroad. Well, why would you have windows? Yeah. That's very true, yeah. And it, this is a four-story building plus a full basement. There's two safes in the building. I, I don't know why this would be colder than anywhere else in the building. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, what did they do down here, Kennedy? There's a lumber mill? It was a hardware warehouse. So they would take the hardware, ship it in, fill the warehouse, then they would take the trucks, load the trucks, and they would go out, and then they would sell to the people. On the planes. So, 
So they didn't really have to have any kind of material to do that. That's weird. It wouldn't be you wouldn't be doing need or anything like that, you know. No. So it's a it's, the mystery. It's room. a mystery room. Yeah. Have you guys ever done EVP sessions and tried asking, and they don't say? We've had a couple of I'm not going to tell you when you need to get out of here. And that's why the basement is not as friendly as the upstairs is. Uh, and sometimes when you're down here, you can hear like a weird growl, and it's just like, okay, we're going back upstairs now. <laughs> we're done down here. But yeah, we haven't got any answers yet on what, what the room is for, but it's just. Do you guys ever feel bad back here, or is it just. Not in here. Over in that corner in the end, back okay. out there, that's the corner that we stay out of. I, I send a peek back there to my stuff, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have a fabulous time tonight. Yes, oh, so thank you yeah. for. Uh, and you'll love Stephanie. Tell Stephanie Angel yeah. said hi. <clears throat> oh, yeah, anytime. Welcome to the McIntyre Villa. This beautiful location still stands strong today, being built almost a century and a half ago in 1889 by a pioneer businessman named John McIntyre, who was born in 1827 in Ireland and made his way into Atchison, Kansas, eventually being known for his harness making. This massive architect cost $14,000 back then and was built within a year. This villa has seen a great deal of history and we are here tonight to investigate experiences that others have had. Project Origin here, we just arrived at the McIntyre Villa. As you can see, we're here with some of the team in the background way back there. Uh, we got Heather on the camera. We got Jan doing the boom mic. Um, we are about to meet with the staff and owner of the McIntyre Villa and they're going to give us a really nice tour and a good amount of history to learn about the place. So please stay tuned. Hello. Just let me know if you want to swap them up. Hi, how are you? Hi. Did someone say hello? You did. How are you? Turn your camera in if that's okay. How are we doing? Jeff Neal. Justin, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Stephanie. Stephanie. Hi, Justin. Nice to meet you, Justin. We're definitely uncovering history as we, uh, you know, doing different projects and running into different people uh, throughout the, uh, the town of Ashton. A lot of it, uh, you know, starts to uncover itself. You know, Ashton is a very, uh, very religious town, so it tends to... Uh, you know, they don't tend to, you know, kind of knock on your door and tell you history about things. You kind of have to get to know people and, you know, once they feel comfortable with you a little bit, they start to uh, open up a little bit about, uh, you know, things that they've experienced, things that their grandparents have experienced. So, well, we've learned a lot. What we do know, it was built in 1889 for John McIntyre. Um, finished in 1890, so it only took a year. Um, $14,000 to build the entire house. Um, Mr. McIntyre moved into the house in 1890 when it was finished with his first wife, Alice. I have record of them having a daughter named Alice also on the census in 1870. The next census in 1880, she's not there. And there's no record of a death or... Hmm. So we're not sure about the daughter, Alice. Um, Mr. McIntyre remarried in 1895 to Anna. She had three sons from a previous yeah. marriage. Well, his first wife passed away. Yeah, I'm sorry, his first so. wife passed away in the house. 1895, with yeah. her three sons, she was a widow. Um, her three sons, Mr. McIntyre and Anna, they all lived in the home. In 1902, Mr. McIntyre passed away in the home from dropsy. Yeah, essentially heart failure. Um, heart failure, yes. okay. At the time, he, uh, Mr. McIntyre, um, you know, he's an Irish immigrant, came over uh, when he was a child, uh, learned his craft from, he, he was in, uh, he lived in Indiana for, or for a while, uh, kind of learned how to, to 
worked with leather, harness making, things like that. And as he was coming this direction, you know, probably from word of mouth and things like that, because at the time, 1870s, 1880s, Atchison was really a booming town. At the time, Kansas City and Atchison were battling to become, which would become the city, you know, the, the predominant city here in, uh, in Kansas. Um, you know, and at the time, they were pretty similar as far as uh, economy, uh, wealth, things like that. You know, I think you've probably heard the story that uh, at one point there were more millionaires here in Atchison than anywhere in the country uh, at the time. Um, as soon as they started to build bridges over, over the uh, Missouri River, essentially Kansas City kind of won out uh, and Atchison started to uh, dissipate as far as uh, commerce at that time. Uh, Mr. McIntyre um, uh, was extremely wealthy. Um, at, uh, and he developed his, his wealth or generated his wealth through uh, uh, leather and harness making. Uh, he still had many settlers still going west. I mean, he had the, you know, the train, train lines and things like that were starting to develop. Um, but um, you still had quite a few people who just couldn't afford to take the trains. And they were still you know, going east, going west, you know, for the gold rush and whatever else that they were hoping to find out west. And so he would, um, you know, his expertise um, essentially was in servicing the wagons, providing uh, um, saddles, harnesses, things like that for the wagons, for the individuals and the settlers going west. So uh, he took a lot of his money and uh, uh, bought into real estate, uh, built buildings. Um, at one point, uh, Mr. McIntyre had uh, one of the largest um, yeah, like convention halls yeah, in Kansas. Uh, everything there from, uh, you know, they'd be everything from, you know, uh, political rallies to, uh, you know, community rallies to uh, baseball, sports activities, baseball. Uh, just about anything would, would go on in this, um, this that convention hall. That was 7th and Commercial Street, so it was right. called McIntyre Hall. Yeah, his store was in the bottom of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what you'll find now, there's a bank building and a big old parking lot. So I don't know what actually happened to this, you know, magnificent, uh, you know, convention hall, but uh, much like a lot of things, which, you know, we're kind of starting to pose the question here pretty soon is, you know, what happened to Mr. McIntyre after he passed away? Um, there's someone, not one picture. No one yeah. can find a picture of Mr. McIntyre. Right. There's really not no much. No one knows what he looks like. Nope. Correct. We've gone to the Historical Society in Topeka. They told us to start at the lower level of Atchison. So yeah. we came here, no pictures, no no pictures of even McIntyre Hall, which was the largest convention right. center. Did they have any photos of his family, like his father or we have his some, wife? Or... Well, we have some photos of uh, his second wife, and we, we have some we photos. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's Anna. And the, there's an older lady that uh, is in the pictures as well. Um, Anna's uh, mother, um, later her in her life, house. started to, uh, when she took ill, lived in the house as well until she passed away here in the house. Uh, and there's a couple pictures of an older lady who looks very similar to, uh, and it would been the right time frame, 1904, 1905, so. Um, what about Alice's, um, or not Alice, the second one's Anna. three kids? I found one picture of one of her sons. He okay. was a pretty prominent um, journalist in Canada. Oh. So I found, he's in the who's who of Canada in, I have a picture of Did he somewhere. take on the what, what? back into your name? He did not. No. His, his uh, last name was uh, Donovan. Donovan, yeah. Donovan. His name was okay. Peter Donovan. Yeah, I, was um, gonna ask, I was just about to ask what, their, what the, right. the three names um, were. Charles Donovan, Peter Donovan, and Fred Donovan. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which uh, it was Charles Donovan. Actually, um, he was the, I would say he was the younger son. Uh, he enlisted into World War I, went over to, to Germany and France. Um, he actually developed a... Um, uh, tuberculosis uh, and had to come back uh, kind of early. Uh, he never really recovered uh, physically from the tuberculosis, suffered from uh, uh, migraines, headaches, um, uh, body aches, so to speak. Um, he essentially committed suicide here in the house. Uh, that was in 1922. 22, yep. October 10th, uh, 1922. Yep. At that time, uh, his uncle, which was a pro prominent judge here in town. We have a picture of him. Uh, judge Conlon. <laughs> yeah. And what, who, what was the name of the man that had tuberculosis? And his Charles. name was Fred. Charles. No, Fred is the one that committed. Oh, Charles. I'm so sorry. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, he committed He's suicide on the second years. floor. <laughs> okay. Um, did, uh, did, Charles. Is there a record of how he did he it? He shot himself wood. in the brain. Well, I guess what the article said was um, he was downstairs. They were having dinner. He said he had a headache, took some headache medicine, went upstairs. Five minutes later, they heard a gunshot. And he, what they said, it was the 22 and a bullet lodged in the left side of his brain. He was alive for two hours and then wow. died upstairs. We don't know which room. 
Right. We haven't been able to quite really figure that slow out. Slow and painful. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Judge Collin. Uh, Judge Conlon is called on. Uh, yeah, yeah. We called on two doctors to come. They tried to save him as much as they could. So for the two hours, they more likely consoled him, if anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if he probably wasn't very conscious at the time, but uh, they did what they could. Um, at the time, there weren't. Um, that would have been 1922. So the, the, there was a hospital, uh, late 1800s. Um, after that, that first hospital only lasted about four or five years, and then um, essentially I don't know if it just ran out of money or what. But then there were a couple uh, doctors here in town um, who essentially probably worked, uh, did house calls, worked out of their house, uh, maybe had private offices, things like that. The secondary hospital wouldn't come around until. I think 1918, 19. So at that point, um, a lot of the doctors, um, which is probably why a lot of people died in their homes at the time, much more comfort, but uh, doctors kind of came to them. So um, I'm, ass I'm assuming, you know, the local Irish doctor um, was probably here. But going back to when the house was first being built, the, the rich folks in town did not want Mr. McIntyre building on their side of town because he was not from here. He was from Ireland. So mm -hmm. he built his home on the hill. And at the time, stained glass was very expensive. So he had stained glass put basically every, everywhere around the house. The biggest and most prominent stained glass, well, is we'll around the corner. You'll see it when we go up the stairs. And his name underneath, McIntyre Villa, as a F you to the yeah. folks who did not want him building on their side. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Irish immigration wasn't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. They but did. Yeah. Jesus. They. Um, but they were never really given credit for much of anything. You know, they came over. Uh, many of them. You know, as soon as they landed in, you know, on the East Coast, they essentially went to fought in the wars. You know, or kind of scurried to do their own things. But it. Uh, you know, even though he had. A, you know, accumulated probably more wealth than anybody else in town. There are probably a handful of different bankers. There were um, a couple families that were involved in the railroad, um, but he would have been top tier as far as money wise. Um, but he was also one of the most generous. You know, he had given back to the community by, you know, since his store was on, uh, was it the end of 7th and Commercial, 8th and Commercial? But he essentially built a lot of those uh, storefronts on that whole block there for. It was called McIntyre Block. Right. Then he had the building McIntyre Hall, then he had McIntyre Villa. Right. But it's still strange to us why we can't find a picture of someone who is so well liked. So Yeah, that's really It's bizarre. very strange. Yeah, so, bizarre, yeah. And yeah. we've had some, some mediums come in and say there's some that's there's something very secretive in this house and I'm like Right. A lot of well, things going just, on. Yeah. No, yeah. The pictures like not a lot even of things going on. Yeah, a lot of I've right. even offered people a free overnight. If they can find me a picture of Mr. McIntyre, I'll give them a free overnight. I'm like, I no yeah. one can find one. It's, yeah, it's, it's from 1924 to 1952 it was a boarding house we don't have any history of what happened in the boarding house we've had people tell us what they yeah. think happened but we don't have any documentation of what actually happened um, so I won't say maybe you can figure something out <laughs> well, we're starting, but, yeah. we are starting we to get are, um, yeah. names of tenants who lived here how long they lived here we're not really sure um, uh, most of that's just through court records, you know, if somebody, had, you know, if they're... They went through a lot of different owners from 1924 right. to 1952. 52, Isabel Altus, nicknamed Goldie, lived here. She passed away in that rocking chair. Yeah, actually and right here. And 1969, sta uh, sitting right here, looking out the window. She lived in the house by herself. Um, the kids across the street, it used to be an elementary school, Franklin Elementary School. It's now a daycare, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, they would ring her doorbell, run away, knock, run away, throw rocks, yeah. break her windows, run away. They weren't very nice to her. Oh, I'm sorry, it was December 20th, and we assumed it was Goldie's the day she died. Um, the newspaper says December 21st, but it also said she'd been dead in her rocking chair for about 24 hours. So I wanted to stay on the 20th just to see if anything happened, and the ceiling fan in the kitchen was turning, and it doesn't work. So I looked at Jeff, and I was like, did you turn that on? And he, nope. And I was like, I don't think it works. And so we're flipping switches. It doesn't work. It just, it's kind of like somebody just yeah, very light pushed just it. Yeah. yeah. So that's happened. We've only noticed it once, but then again, we're not really in the kitchen a lot and we don't really look at the ceiling fan. Um, that happened. We hear like pots and pans like crashing and some other groups have heard that too. And you come in here and there's like nothing that's moved. 
So that's happened. We do hear quite a bit of footsteps above us when we're in the dining room. Say we're playing games with some friends over. We hear lots of thuds. You're going to get that feeling when you're here. You're going to get uh, uh, a lot of the entities are very ornery about things. You'll, you know, things will, things will kind of be out of place. You know, you may put something down and come in later and it'll be in another room. Um, and so it makes you second guess a lot of things. You're just, you know, there's times when I, I know for a fact I didn't go to, into a room, but yet, you know, something that I had in here will be sitting in there for some weird reason. So you just constantly are just second guessing things. And so you're always, and when you hear voices and you hear things and you hear rattles, you're, you know, doors will open or, you know, you'll hear. We do have, it, it's kind of, a, we have one door that we have seen open multiple times and then months will go by and it won't budge and then it'll open. I'm like, yes, it's opening again. And then months will go by and it won't budge again. Parlor, I guess. Okay. Um, the, the floor is completely different. Even though yeah, if you come in here, we'll, we'll take the carpet up. Here. It's more of a grimy. Yeah, you can tell this definitely would have been a uh, this would have been a boarding house. This would have been a, a room where we would have definitely would have a lot high amount of traffic coming in and out. The uh, furniture? Yeah. Or, no, we brought all of it. So a lot of it was was painted. They, they also did this in the kitchen area too. So you'll notice a lot of it's. Uh, yes. yep. Uh, yeah, kind of been sanded up like a little bit, but uh, really nice, uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we can't keep them full, otherwise, yeah. you know, we would, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, and so yeah, this would have been uh, you know, kind of an entryway uh, for you know, guests to come and go. Um, the uh, if you'll notice, a lot of these older Victorian homes, uh, the way they're set up would have been set up for um, you know, some of them when you go into. Um, a lot of the, the entryways uh, are pretty grandiose for in order to um, you know have a, a lot of you know get-togethers, balls, um, and, and whatnot for you know the, the wealthier individuals in town. Uh, Mr. McIntyre, being um, even though he had a lot of wealth, he was still very blue collar. So if you notice the way his house is set up, the rooms are a little bit smaller, especially the entryways, and so uh, he probably wouldn't have had a lot of people here. Uh, the home w was more set up for uh, his immediate family. So when they came okay. home in the evenings, um, it, uh, it probably tended to um, uh, be more for their enjoyment. They may have had some small gatherings, but you know, I think that uh, you know, again, you know, the Irish were very, uh, you know, um, you know, very practical about the way they did things. They weren't very grandiose as far as uh, uh, entertainment type things uh, for the most part. Um, and so, uh, there's still when you go throughout the house, even though it is, it's got a lot of uh, elaborate aspects. To it, uh, it's still very uh, a lot of utilitarian aspects as well. Another ten foot pot doors. Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the old doors are still and working. They're pretty cool. I mean, yeah. here there's one there. There is one over here, and they they're pretty nice. Goldie did. Um, I will say she did teach piano, and she also was a classically trained violinist. That's why we have a piano and oh, wow. a, a violin. People do hear music, very faint music. We've heard that a few times. I've never seen it playing, but oh uh, well, it doesn't latch. It's going to open on its own. I did it earlier, and I could probably do it again. But I can. I will jump. I will just do whatever. It's not going to open. It. Yeah. It. It kind of feels like it's magnetic, sort of. So. Yeah. Well, what we kind of also know too is that a lot of these doors, which you know, you know, there's there's no pull on the door. There's no you know. Does it gravity pull the door push open? Push on it without touching the knob. Like if you just push it will. straight yep. in the middle of the door. Yeah, you can it push will. it open. Yeah, yep. but it. Uh, but like I said, you know, it will be months. Or months will go by and it won't so. budge. And so, I can't believe I just jumped at the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well. I will do it. But people don't believe me until they'll go around and they're they'll close the door downstairs and then this will open and say, oh, debunked it, pressure. But we, I don't think. That would work. Um, can always try it. I don't know, but let's see. This room here is what we call Lucy's Parlor. Oh, the reason we call it Lucy's Parlor is because we have a dog named Lucy who hates this house, and the house hates her. So we thought we'd name a room after her. <laughs> um, <laughs> this here is the original porch that was on the side um, where I was showing you, and it is no longer here, so we're hoping to recreate it. We are not sure who this is. It was 1914, um, so it was before it became a boarding house. This here 
is kind of interesting. This is what we call the library. Um, and things that have happened in here, this, this room is kind of strange to me. It is, it, it's, there's definitely a different presence here in this in the library here. Lots of people take pictures in this mirror, and they get... Oh, this uh, mirror. This mirror here, uh-huh. Yeah, you get... They, uh, some, I've taken thousands, and I'm not joking, thousands of pictures, and I get, like, nothing. Um, <laughs> and then back to the hallway, I will say, our... Here, I'll put it out. Our bedroom is right here, so we just lock it. It's just... Oh, that door is just our bedroom. Um, mm -hmm. This here, this bathroom, the scariest thing to me in this bathroom is the wallpaper. But there are lots of people who will not use this restroom. I have a friend, she very clearly heard somebody say hello to her since she sat down. She won't come in here anymore. Um, we've had groups here and they say there's like a, they open the door and they hear a growl or they've seen a shadow. I've not seen or heard either one of those. Um, and we're just fine using the restroom in here. So <laughs> for uh, something paranormal, maybe just use the plugins for a while. This room here we call the kids' room just because people have told us there's lots of children that run up and down the hallway. Um, oh, I found my creepy doll. Okay, now this yes. doll is this one. Yeah, is new to us. Um, a friend sent me a message. This was posted on actually one of her Facebook things. It was a. It was in Arkansas, and they said it was an early 1900s um, Burmese marionette made with real human hair, and it's haunted. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So actually, what did I do the next day? Went to Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, came <laughs> home with it, yeah. Came home with it. Well, um, we had, uh, we had a, media, a couple of mediums here um, before we went to um, Arizona about a month ago, and she... Um, Essentially advised us to make sure that uh, we would to lock lock it away and make sure that it's not uh, accessible to, to people to. So we just put um, her in this today. We brought. Yeah, yeah. she, the, the the medium lady was not getting, you know, a very really good feeling about her. So um, and so she yeah. had, um, like I said, definitely advised us to kind of lock it away and not let. Uh, I I will say, um, that is the first time we heard the man's voice. Um, we have. These little things that are cat toys, I wouldn't, this stuff has not happened until we did bring her here though. So this doesn't go off unless you, well, now come in, unless yeah, you move it. Yeah, um, so this is the first time, the same night as the, the man's voice. The man's voice. Um, There's something else, this was going off and I can't remember something else happened that night too. What, you talking about me? What? <laughs> okay, that it might be kind of chilly. Um, and these actually were the service stairs, if you notice, they're quite a bit, uh, quite a bit steeper, yeah. more narrow. Uh, same age, It's funny because a lot of people tend to gravitate towards the tower because a few people have said they they believe someone might have hung themselves in the tower. We don't have any documentation, so I don't know for sure if that ever happened, but there's quite a bit of actual noise and movement in this corner over here. Yeah, the back end there. It's very strange, yeah. It's, okay. people will, they'll, because they want to go over there where the tower is, but there's a lot of something over here. <laughs> and be careful, these stairs are a little, little um, okay. tricky. <laughs> They're smaller, I guess. I'm actually yeah, there's got to take this camera. Careful with the stairs, they're too heavy. So this is the laundry room. This is uh, goes out to, you know, that flat kind of door outside. The storm door goes out yeah. that direction, so. Yeah. I'm um, not okay. sure what these rooms were used for, but one of the rooms. There's about eight down here. Yeah. And each room, like I said, has, it has its own individual light, so you just have to do the switch. Um, the only one that's different is this one, so you just kind of have to yeah. twist it. Oh, like that, okay. Um, the rest have its own little cord. Um, laundry room, don't know what, like I said, I don't know what any of the basement was really used for. Maybe um, we've heard stories, but. <laughs> well, back then, um, I, I hope they're true, but <laughs> I don't know if I should say this. <laughs> 
Well, at the turn of the century, I mean, this would have been a full working basement. We would have had, uh, right. you, know, you know, different floors have different, uh, some are brick floors, some are dirt floors. Um, you would have had, um, you know, the, the big, the, the hardest thing, in, in, especially in this house, and even back then, is being able to, uh, to regulate humidity. We, we, even with, you know, two commercial, you know, humidifiers, it, it's, it's difficult even for us. So, I mean, they probably would have learned different techniques probably from the Indians. Uh, as far as um, being able to utilize these as storage for dry goods, for fruits, vegetables, meats, things like that. So they, each different room would have been utilized for Once. different purposes, but they would have had to be able to regulate the, the you know, the humidity in, in, in the rooms. Otherwise, you, you're, you know, the, the food would perish a lot of times. So how they did it, I, I, I'd like to know, but... Uh, like I said, we've heard stories of things that possibly have happened down here. Uh, we knew some different ones that said kind of the same thing. Um, the reason we have medicine bottles, we have two medicine bottles, and actually I think from Atchison back in the day. I thought they were bigger when I ordered them on eBay, but they're not as big. <laughs> um, we've heard that there was a doctor down here who did um, illegal surgeries and things surgeries? like that. So. Illegal surgeries, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what the actual other than mediums would be like sensitive or I'm not sure if any of you are lots of people. I don't. Oh, that's they a creepy feel place. A little just odd. two random chairs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks like an interrogation room. Yeah. <laughs> lots of people feel um, just see windows even boring yeah. kind of nauseous in here. I never have, but we've had some people just run out. Um we we were down here uh, with um a friend and then Jeff and his friend and we had the little recorder and we asked it to say one of our names and sure enough we played it back and it said one of our names. Um, we had another instance where we asked why do you stay down here and they were, it sounded like more like a kid, not like a child child but maybe a... Adolescent or something? Right, yeah. yeah. 10, 11, something like that. Um, said because it's quiet down here. Um, so this room, kind of creepy, just and like I said it gets really dark, um, especially down in the basement. In this room here, I was with a, a friend, and we heard a lady moaning um, twice, very loudly, but only in this room, and we we don't know what that was, but so that was so new for us. Sometimes we, we've come down here, and then, uh, you know, we'll go to another room, and, and we'll come back, and like the, uh, the curtain pieces have been pulled out from the... Uh, and these curtains are really gross, so I don't like to touch them, um, right. but it's very flimsy, so if this were to come out, these will, would just drop. And this here, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when Justin touches wires. And Jack has to fix it. Okay. All right, I'm separated. Thank you. Don't do that again, child. I'll try not to. Do it good. All right, so. Do we want to go up the back hallway, you think, with the camera? So what are you thinking? To the right? To the right? Yeah. Not too much. This way, though, like right here. The door is going to be more like this, so if it opens, you're not really going to see what's behind it if it opens. I don't know if that makes any sense. Oh, okay. Just in case, let's say it opens and you do see like a mist or a shadow or something in there. Yeah. If it's well, more this way, it might be... What's this right there? That's a chair, I think. Okay, so maybe we should move that then. There we go. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one with a flashlight? Yeah. Sorry, that's super bright. Oh, it's okay. How do you shut this? It's not going to shut. No, oh, just keep it like that is fine. But just to try to contaminate the noise, you know. I mean, not contaminate noise levels. Like, you wanted to face the camera? Yeah, like right there. So that way you might even get some REM pod with the light.
If there's anyone here, could you please tell us your name? Are you a male? How old are you? I should probably introduce myself. My name is Justin. I'm Heather. And we're here just visiting the McIntyre Villa. We really love this property. It's so beautiful. Can you back away from it, please? If you want us to leave this attic and leave you alone, can you make it go quiet? Can you step away so it's quiet? Faster. Sounds like Morse code again. Uh huh. Faster. Slower. <laughs> Are you tricking us? Are you just playing games with us? You are. You are a funny one. Do you like the lights? Is that fun to play with? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'll say to me it sounds like a police siren. Oh, it could be. Uh oh, this just turned off. Battery did? I have no idea. Well, thank you. That was cool. Do you want to do it again? Was that fun? Thank you. Would you like to talk to us about the McIntyre Villa here? Did you used to live here? I just... Did you feel something? Yeah. <laughs> what's, going on, what's going on beside you there? Keep looking over to your side. I don't know. <laughs> you turn the camera over there to your side. Well, not really. I mean, there's nothing there to the physical eye. I don't eye. know, but sometimes <laughs> the camera might pick it up too. Um, Tell me like what you felt or stuff. Well, just kind of like somebody's over there. I don't like know. Like you're standing or just kind of... Kind of like you get a feeling like someone's watching from behind, watching you from behind. Okay. Yeah. So just kind of that... That feeling. That okay. feeling. That uncomfortable <laughs> feeling a little bit. Looks like we left a light on in here. Oh, that's the break room. Okay, we're good. 
Never mind. I know you like to open and close this door. And we're hoping that you show us tonight that you can do it. Feel free to open that door anytime you want to tonight, okay? We'll be looking forward to see if you can do it. Um, so, I know back when they made the structure here, as we were told earlier, that they had built it in a way that Everything is very, very built, uh, really strong. I mean, the structure is really good. You can see these, this wood up here. Like, everything is just, uh, I mean, this is all original wood right here. And there's no uh, signs of uh, the wood going bad or anything. I know that uh, when they built the place, as we were talking to the owners earlier, that, as I had said, place has good bones from what I see, and it's just really great to see. The uh, McIntyre Villa was built back around 1887-1888, built in just one year's time. If you can imagine that time back, you know, way back when, it took people many years to build a property. So I know they built this one up in just a year, and this type of property you know, over a hundred years ago. As you can think about it too, the Atchison, Kansas here, um, you know, the town was known to be, you know, essentially supply and demand. There's lots of trading going on, lots of uh, bringing in different, uh, different, uh, you know, brick, you know, even different types of limestone. I know this whole town has a lot of limestone in it, which, you know, in itself, is sort of a huge conductor for spiritual energy. Okay, ready? You're just gonna follow behind me close. <laughs> huh? Follow behind me close. Stop it. Okay. Stop. I forget how hard that thing is. Well, we were going up to Haddock. Don't open a door just yet. I won't. I think it's seen. It looks like actually, the insidious door. <laughs> it does, but I really like the red color of the door. I'm a really big fan of red, though. Yes. We're about to enter into the furniture. There's camera, but it is red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Into the further we go. We're what? going into the upside oh my gosh, down. I <laughs> it's really cold. It's Prepare so yourself. Cold. So what happened over here was <laughs> these two got together and this one. It's, it's a love triangle. Love triangle. There you go. Couldn't decide between a brunette or a blonde. The wig got snatched. Apparently he chose the brunette though. Yeah, they look pretty friendly. Yeah, she's got her head turned. She's disgusted. Actually come down here, maybe do like a quick spirit box session. Okay, do you want this one and I'll do the right one so I can flash you, can't we? Oh, sure. There we go. We can step around the other for a second. Uh, my name is Justin. 
And now stand up. Hi. That's Jack here. Sitting right beside me. All right. Is there anyone here with us right now? When did you live here? I don't. Nothing Colton, Colton, did you die here? So, does anybody here know if there's a tie between the Sally House and the McIntyre Villa? Doctor what? Doctor something. You, did you hear doctor? I heard and doctor. I heard doctor too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it's I thought, yeah. I want to say Dr. Wardall, but I mean, that's not. But wasn't the one of the owners of the Sally House a doctor? Yeah. 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 The guy who built it. Because we, we had this theory. Doctor. Finney. Finney. It's the Finney family. Finney. Yeah. Because he, yeah. Well, cause yeah, the local. Did Dr. Finney do something here? Did Dr. Finney and, and Mr. McIntyre have something going together? Did the doctor used to visit here a lot? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we talking to the doctor right now, Dr. Finney? We also have a REM pod down here, and that's uh, where I'm pointing my uh, <clears throat> this light right here, right to it. That object on the ground, if you get close enough to it and you put your hand down there, just like I'm doing right now, we'll put my hand here. If you get close enough, those little lights on there, they go off. They have different colors on there.
hero woman. If you used to live here, can you turn the flashlight on? I don't mind. My flashlight just went off in my hand. Was that you? Yeah, the flashlight that I was holding just went off, so I turned it back on. Okay, so that was... Can you turn it off, please? Thank you. Can Did you turn my flashlight back off? Want to ask your question, Dana? Well, wants you to ask the question. Okay. So I was going to ask um, if you died down here in this in this room, can you turn the flashlight on? Did you die in this house? Thank you. Okay, can you turn it back off for us, please? Thank you. You're doing great. Good job. You can turn it off. Good. Thank you. Did you die in this basement if you died in the basement can you turn the flashlight on were you a one-time owner of this house can you turn the flashlight on for yes And so said it was a woman. Women didn't own property back then. Emerald, the lady who owned it then. Yeah, she and she actually um, yeah. passed here. Um, what was her name? Emerald, was it? Uh, Emerald. It just lit up. Oh, thank yes. You. Turn it off. It, she owned it from like something until 62. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. If this is. Emerald we're talking to, can you turn the light on? Yeah, Goldie, right? Goldie, Goldie. Goldie. Can you turn the flashlight on? Oh, Gold, where'd we get Emerald from? That was me. Well, it responded to Ooh. that. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, okay, well, maybe it's... Did you die in the attic? If so, could you please turn the light on? Um, can I say something? Yes. I think, uh, yeah, thank you for, thank you for that. Thank you. Can I say something? So, you were saying that, um, the story that was being told upstairs that you were listening to was something about, um, allegations of somebody being hung upstairs? Mm-hmm. Um, 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 is that you? <laughs> Did that happen to you? Were you hung upstairs? In the attic? In the attic. Be specific. I got the sleep slurs. Is anyone in this room with us right now? Can you tell us what your name is?
Can you make them cross? I'm getting like a weird like pulsing sensation through these. Like it's like, it's not like my heart rate, like it's electric. It, it almost feels like it's like, you know, kind of how like magnets repel each other. It, that's what it feels like. Oh, they're crossing. There it is. Thank you. Can you straighten them back out, please? Can you straighten them back out, please? It's, it's really strong. Like, it's like you're going right toward the doll there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's like, literally, it feels like two magnets repelling against each other. Like, that's how strong of a force it is. Whatever is there with the doll, can you straighten the two rods back out so they're parallel? So you just keep trying to point right toward it. You seriously have to feel this though. It's so crazy. Do you want me to? I'm going to turn towards you and see if they uncross each other. If Can you point towards the doll? Make them point to where the doll is. You know. Can you turn them so they point at the doll right there? Just wiggling. Immediately, I got that repelling magnet sensation on these again. That's and they're crossed. Oh, I accidentally nudged that one a little bit. Oh god, they're spinning around. I want you to try. You have to feel this. It's insane. <clears throat> it like it's literally like feels like magnets repelling each other. It's got to get balanced here. Would you point the rods straight back toward me, point them off to the side and spin around? Do you feel like that magnetic sensation though? I feel like someone's touching them. Do you? To me it felt like, um, kind of like the electric magnets like repelling each other and it kind of had like a pulsing sensation. Oh, I got a lot of goosebumps. Oh, yeah. All the way around, point them straight at him.
Awesome. Ooh, I got a lot of goosebumps right now. Yeah. All right, just confirm. Can you bring his all the way back around and straighten them out? Pointing back at you. Whoa. Yeah, that one happened much faster. Someone like literally took that and pulled it. You bring the other one back around and straighten out. You okay? Felt my hand get touched. Oh. There it goes. It seems to Thank be responding you. a little faster to you than it did to me. Thank you for doing that for me. Are you attached to this doll? If you are, could you please bring these rods to my right? So that'd be this direction over here. Do you believe you are the stall? If that's the case, could you make the rods cross? Do you wish that the doll wasn't in this room? If you want the doll out of this room, can you make those rods cross each other into an X? Well, it's like right when you said that. It's like, no. Yeah, stick I straight. Want it in here. Yeah. Stick straight. Do you have any questions on this? Um, is whatever attached to this doll evil? If the answer is yes, turn the rods to the left towards me. Are you evil? If you're evil, turn those rods to the left. You have a lot of goosebumps right now. Are you feeling anything like negative, like you're scared or like your heart's racing or anything? I just feel like uh, energy is going toward me and there's just like a big wall in front of me. Mm -hmm. Can you please move the rods to the straight again? Straighten them all for me, please. Did something bad happen to the person who owned this doll before it came here? If the answer is yes, turn the rods to the left towards me. Take that as a solid no. That's good, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Dana had asked if you are negative. If you are very negative, could you please bring your rods to my right here? 
Oops. Are they still straight? It's hard to tell on this monitor. They're going toward the right to the left. If you're evil, like you say, turn those rods to the right in the direction away from me. You scared me for a second. I was Something like, "Push my hand." Oh, really? Do you want to switch? Like, like put your hand out once, just like, like, like you're holding it. Yeah. And some did this. Oh, Jesus! And I got a shock after that. Like we got a little oh. shock. Let's trade for a minute. If you're negative or evil, as I said earlier, can you turn the rods to the right towards where Justin is standing? Are you evil? If you are not evil, can you make the rods point at Justin? Huh. Do you not like talking to me anymore? If you don't like talking to me, can you turn the rods to the left? I don't feel like that magnetic, like, repulsion that I was feeling before the first time. If you That's so weird. I mean, they kind of tilted a little left, but nothing, like, significant or really noticeable. Okay. I mean, I was holding them right, right? I mean, you saw me yeah. holding them pretty straight, right? Mm -hmm. the they were, like, going zonkers. Yeah. I mean, I felt like, uh, like here, hold it out once, like toward me, and I'll tell you what I feel like. I felt like someone did this. Oh, really? And you can feel me hold it. Yeah. Like there was a pull. And so I was yeah. like, whoa, someone, you know, like pulled it. Yeah. That's why I was just like, uh, what the heck is going on with that? Do you want me to give these rods back to Justin? If you want me to give these back to Justin, then you need to turn them so they point at him. If you turn them to the right and point them at Justin, I'll give these back to him, and I won't touch him anymore. It's, I literally just feel like magnet, like two re repelling magnets. Other than that, nothing's happening. I wonder if it's done talking for now, whatever it might be. Yeah. If you're done, 
Can you cross them into an X and then we'll leave this room? If you want us to leave this room, cross these rods into an X. Maybe it doesn't. What, maybe it doesn't suffering? like me because I called it out. <laughs> I don't know. Are you evil? Okay, I'm back. Do you want us to stop talking to you for now? If that's the case, could you please make these rods into an X and cross them? They're like doing the opposite. Yeah. Do you want just me to leave the room? If so, cross them into an X and I'll leave and Justin will stay. Do you want me to go? Oh, you ever came? I got Cross them into an X all the way. I got, oh. All right. It oh, doesn't. Push it back, please. Push it back. Put po it toward the middle. Yep. Point them back the at the doll, please. Put it toward the middle. All right. Well, Thank what you. do you think? Should I stay or? I'm going to put these down for now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Why don't you see if it'll communicate with you on um, either the flashlight or the EVP. Maybe if you put the flashlight up here so it's closer to the doll, maybe. Well, I don't know what's going on with that. Like, every time that happens, like when it, like when I told you, like when it does that, mm -hmm. I feel like it's zapping a little bit of energy out of me. Because that's the other thing is I've been keeping, I've been keeping a white bubble around me ever since yesterday when we were at the Sally house and I asked for spirit guides and angels to stand in a circle around me and protect me from anything negative in this house because something was freaking me out and I think this is it because I called it out for being evil and it said yes and now it refuses to talk to me but now it's sucking energy out of you but it can't off of me because I'm protected but yeah there's, um, some, there's something about it yeah. I can't yeah. Figure on it. I would take take a minute and get, you know, the white light built up a, yeah, a little bit and for a second, actually. Yeah. You're going to leave for a little bit? Yeah, I might want to get out here for a second. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to put the flashlight up here cuz the, most of the anymore. energy seems to happen here by the doll. Oh, I just feel like it has this weird likeliness toward me. That's because you're the only one in this room I can get to right now. Where did they say this doll came from? I don't remember. Started with a V, didn't it? All right. Oh my gosh, it's already going on. No, I'm not gonna stay in this room right now. I'm going downstairs. Here, I'll leave if that makes you feel better. I'll yeah. stand right outside the door. Okay, can you turn it off? Going downstairs right now. Turn the flashlight off, please. I don't know why I'm saying please. Can you turn the flashlight off? If you want Justin to come back into this room and talk to you, you have to turn that light off. Oh. Okay. Jack and Dana upstairs at McIntyre Villa. I'm gonna scooch over so I can get the camera on those.
So just to reach out and talk about some of my experiences, I wanted to say that when we were actually, uh, and this is actually happened a couple days ago now, we were in a doll room when me and Dana were up there. Um, as you can see, I was feeling really sort of out of place. The energy was like really negative in a sense where it was taking energy out of me and I wasn't really realizing what was going on. Um, I know through the process, um, I, I had realized and come to a conclusion that whatever I was talking to, whatever I was talking to, um, you know, I believe there to be a spirit attached to that doll, but I don't think that's who I was talking to in between. I think that whatever was there was uh, something just sort of scooped in, something just sort of swept in, uh, pushed the other spirit right out of the way, right by the doll there, and acted like it, like, you know, like it was that spirit. Um, something, you know, extremely negative um, when I was communicating with it. And we did say, is it negative and this and that? And we had confirmation that it did say it was. I felt really weird. You know, I felt really weird afterwards. Um, to the point where I just almost wanted to just fall back and fall over. Really lightheaded. Really, essentially, even disassociated with the situation. And I know when I went downstairs afterwards to take a break, take a breather, go and sit at the dining room table at the villa there. I just had to get my, you know, recoup and get everything back together. I did investigate a little bit further past that because we went to the basement. And I just sort of conked out. Just, you know, I mean, obviously it's late, but I just conked out. Woke up the next day. Around 9 o'clock, um, I actually overslept a little bit. Um, but the weird part about it was is that when I woke up, I felt this anger, this hate. I was trying to hold it back. It just kept consuming me and consuming me and the energy kept building. You know, I would uh, often walk away and sort of isolate myself from the rest of the team members because I wanted to yell. I wanted to yell at somebody. I wanted to, I wanted to pretty much punch the wall, punch whatever was near me. I just had a lot of hate in me. And for no apparent reason, it was just there. It kept building and building and building. And I didn't know what to do about that. Um, it was just a uh, really bit horrible feeling and whether it had been uh, some, you know, leftover energy from whatever it was last night that's still lingering around me. I know that the remainder of that day, uh, pretty much everything dissipated. Uh, everything was great. You know, we got some saging. We usually do some saging to sort of get rid of the negativity and, uh, you know, let people know that, yeah, you can follow me home, whatever you, you know, whatever it is you might be. But I do know that that was one of the experiences I had, and honestly, right then and there, I felt like something was trying to possess me. I don't quite know exactly what it was. All I know is is that we, you know, we got rid of it. Essentially, where at least it's not anywhere near me. And to, you know, come back with that, we actually had another team member who, Jan, who uh, had had some experiences herself too, and it made me be believe that maybe she had something similar happen. And it might have followed her home, potentially. Um, she did get rid of it. Uh, it took her a while. It, you know, it's almost like I was trying to have her make some type of portal between there and, and, her, and here. So she could uh, invite whatever it is over there or here. Um, whatever that might be, I don't know. It's sort of a weird situation, exactly. Uh, I know, too, when I woke up last night, because I had went into like a deep sleep... And right now, what's currently uh, Wednesday, so it was Tuesday, yesterday, last night, um, I completely, you know, uh, April woke me up, and for some reason, I had like a, maybe a five-second weird vision there where I thought I was still sleeping at the McIntyre Villa. Like, I was still there, and I was like, what, what, what? You know, I didn't even know where it was for like five seconds. It was really weird, you know, that stuff usually doesn't happen to me. So I don't know, you know, what's transpiring exactly. I know that, uh, you know, there's a definitely a connection felt with the, both the places that we visited. So, um, you know, if there's any more, like, type of uh, experiences that sort of pop up as we experience all this stuff, we'll make sure to keep, you know, letting everyone know what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's sort of a reminder to cleanse yourself, do saging, do whatever type of ritual it is that you do 
to protect yourself before you leave locations if you highly believe that you need to because if you don't or if you don't do it carefully enough you know there are energies that can you know potentially lead you astray might be negativity might be uh, something that you just don't want around so just a heads up on that I would definitely consider and do a lot of cleansing before you leave properties so